Thank you so much uh, for coming out for an update on the murder investigation involving Catherine Aguas Vivas uh, that happened on April 11th, which has been widely covered. Uh, two large uh, updates that I'll provide today, and at the end, uh, I'll open myself for any questions. Uh, as I've said in the early briefings of this, this is an ongoing investigation, and I think that timely delivery, as much information as we can, uh, is incredibly important. Uh, the first is we're no longer looking for a green 2002 Acura. We've located that vehicle. Uh, the circumstances leading up to that are one that I'll describe out now, that uh, the car was legitimately owned uh, by a family in Winter Springs. Uh, they sold that to a legitimate car dealership back in December. Sold the car or traded the car in. As car dealerships typically do, they traded off to an auto auction, it went to an auto auction, and then ultimately was purchased by a buy here, pay here owner operator who sold it from their lot uh, in Seminole County. Uh, they sold it, it was still titled to the original owners in Winter Springs. It had not had enough time for the, to work out the transfer of title. And the people who purchased the car never came back to finish the additional paperwork. Uh, they still owed uh, the person money, so the car uh, has been out on the streets probably since February, unregistered, um, undocumented with a license plate. Uh, any license plate that it had on at any given time was just temporarily put on, largely from a stolen tag. What's unique about a 2002 green Acura in the state of Florida, there were only three in the state of Florida. Uh, two had been salvaged and only one existed uh, in the state. When we look at records, uh, the first time authorities came in contact with this was when it was towed on March 19th from an Orlando apartment complex. Uh, the car was backed in, parked illegally, uh, probably had no tag on it at the time, and it was towed from an Orange County apartment complex on March 19th. The tow truck driver of that uh, particular tow of this vehicle was a murder victim in Orange County that happened one day before our kidnapping murder. April 10th, a tow truck driver was murdered in Orange County. Uh, at that scene, a green vehicle matching the description of this green vehicle uh, was located. And there was more than 100 rounds fired at that location one of the rounds found at the scene were 10 millimeter rounds, which is again, uh, an incredibly unique and uncommon round for us to see out on the streets. Uh, as you can imagine, the Orange County Sheriff's Office, this is their case. Uh, they've been working this thing aggressively and they have been partnering with our organization on the murder investigation uh, that we're looking into with Catherine to connect the dots between the two locations. We were able to locate this vehicle just recently on Saturday, uh, April 13th, uh, one day after we had the news conference announcing that we were investigating a murder. It once again was parked and abandoned in an Orange County apartment complex and was towed through a contractual tow service. When a tow service tows a vehicle that is illegally parked in an apartment complex, they have a responsibility to contact either the tag or through VIN uh, to report into a system. That is how the VIN number was identified. Again, the VIN number was unique because there was only one 2002 green Acura left in the state of Florida. When the VIN number ran, we immediately knew it was our car. That vehicle then was collected, transferred to the Orange County Sheriff's Office to be evaluated for evidence with the Orange County team and the Seminole County team. So, so no longer looking for the car. We still are looking for information about people who are occupants in the car, whether at the Orange County case or our case. That part of the process is ongoing. But again, we wanna thank everyone's help who have called in, reached out to crime line, done whatever, and especially the media for getting that information out. Second part that I want to uh, brief up on is uh, an Orange County deputy was arrested by the Seminole County Sheriff's Office. Uh, Francisco Estrella was arrested last night uh, by our agency. 
Now, when this initial report of the kidnapping uh, was made, our detectives saw, as the public saw, the phone number on the rear window of that vehicle. When we called that phone number in the early stages of the investigation, uh, the decedent's husband picked up the phone, came back to him. Uh, we identified ourselves. We had one of our detectives say who we were, what we were looking at, and that's how we disclosed that we are working a kidnapping case. Uh, both the decedent's wife, Miguel, and her brother, Louis, who live in Homestead, provided whatever information they could on the phone and then agreed to travel up here uh, to Seminole County. As they were traveling up here to Seminole County, uh, Miguel and Louis reached out to a mutual friend, a childhood friend as it's described, who happens to be the Orange County deputy's wife. Uh, the, the wife of the Orange County deputy reached out and said, I've been contacted by this person who's identified by, uh, by name as a detective with the, with the Seminole County Sheriff's Office. Can you find out whatever information you can about this particular person? Uh, uh, the deputy uh, then picks up the phone, uh, calls our detective, and gives a false name and identifies himself as a detective with the Orange County Sheriff's Office wanting to get information about this case. Uh, later in that conversation, he actually says he's a deputy sheriff, but for the entire time, he's giving a fake name as he's communicating with our folks. And our detectives obviously uh, thought that that communication was strange, especially the timeliness of it just hours after we have identified that we're working a, a homicide case here. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we knew that the Orange County deputy and wife uh, accessed illegally uh, the Florida David system and pulled, pulled up the unique characteristics, home address, photographs, signatures of our primary detective working the case and all of the communication between the Orange County deputy uh, and our detective working the case was then recorded, all communicated back uh, to the decedent's husband uh, who was on his way here. When he was here, I had mentioned in the briefing on Friday that he has been cooperative. He has provided uh, to the extent that, that he feels comfortable with what was going on on Friday. I think when I laid out those circumstances, I said that her vehicle was being rammed by the, by the vehicle behind her. They didn't call 911, he didn't call 911 and then her phone looked like it was immediately turned off after that. So he's on his way up here. Uh, he is uh, contacting uh, whoever he can and he cooperates to the extent that he feels comfortable with. Part of that cooperation is he gives us his phone. We ask for his phone, he gives us his phone, we forensically examine that phone and that's how we found the communication between the Orange County deputy and his wife and him. It came through the examination of that phone. That is why uh, he has now been charged with uh, five felonies here in Seminole County. Uh, two of those uh, felonies deal with um, uh, recording and releasing the audio file of the, the detective's conversation with him. Uh, two of those uh, charges relate to un unlawfully accessing a police database and particularly the David system that, that released unique characteristics of the home address, uh, the photograph and signatures of the lead investigator in this case. And then the last charge uh, is the uh, use of a two-way communication device in the commission of these felonies. Uh, he has just gone through first appearance at two o'clock uh, here in Seminole County today. I don't know um, any of the details about what happened during that first appearance hearing. We were. Uh, working with our uh, detectives on the inside uh, here. So, uh, a lot of updates. Uh, we still have incredibly dangerous people that are out there on the streets. We still want to encourage uh, our public to, to, again, not approach these individuals. They should be perceived as uh, armed and dangerous. Uh, anybody who has any information about the occupants of this incredibly rare vehicle here in the state of Florida uh, should contact authorities, either the Orange County Sheriff's Office or the Seminole County Sheriff's Office, or if you feel more comfortable, Crime Line, where you can be eligible for a reward and remain anonymous uh, as we go. Uh, 
uh, again, uh, with that, I'll open for any questions about the additional information that we're briefing on today. Sheriff, just to clarify uh, here, you're, are you suggesting that this investigation that you're doing is connected to the Taft shooting that happened last week where the guy was shot up in front of the house with all those bullets? Is that the one that you're referencing? So, so it's either connected or it's a heck of a coincidence, right? I, I think that what we need to do is to make sure that uh, physical evidence and evaluation and reports can positively make that connection. But what we do know now is this vehicle, our suspect's vehicle by unique VIN number was towed uh, back on March 19th from the murder victim at the scene. There are more than 100 rounds, but a good percentage of those rounds on the ground are 10 millimeter. The gun used in the murder uh, of our victim that we found burnt up in the vehicle in Osceola County. So um, I absolutely think they're connected, when, but we'll have to have physical evidence that absolutely proves that. When that shooting happened on Wednesday, and again, there's a lot of moving parts here, so I want to make sure for clarity, that car wasn't on the scene and tapped last Wednesday. That car was towed two or three weeks before then, right? And then released. So what we have, and I don't want to get too far into the Orange County investigation, although they are working hand in glove with, with our detectives here, but a green vehicle was seen at that location. It seems like it was towed back in March, ultimately released on the scene of this particular crime, uh, so we, we think the green vehicle was there at the murder scene. In the Orange County murder scene? Yes. Secondly, so this conversation with this deputy to your detectives, recording without that detective's permission, sharing with the husband, clearly you guys have filed criminal charges in that case. Has this impeded your investigation in your opinion? So, so, you know, we're talking about the deputy's involvement. It, it, has, it has no negative involvement in our investigation, but absolutely creates a dangerous environment for our, for our deputies and our staff. Um, you know, we know that, that this deputy relayed this information to the decedent's husband, Miguel. Uh, but at this point in time, we don't know who else he may have shared that information with. And I, I think that any person who's ever uh, turn on the TV, you know, seeing the things that are, that are incredibly challenging out there and find out the unique, bizarre characteristic of, of these cases. I don't know that any of us will want our names and our home addresses released, especially if we had a responsibility to enforce and hold the, the violators of this accountable. So uh, I think we're incredibly concerned, but the involvement of the Orange County deputy does not slow us down at all and does not have negative effect on the case that we're working. Well, that's, that's going to be a great part of what I hope the ongoing investigation is both here and I, I know independently Orange County would, would conduct their own administrative investigation. But, uh, you know, we know that or we believe that they were childhood friends. Uh, uh, of course, there was a relationship with there. But what they had to gain is something that, um, that I'm incredibly interested in. Why would somebody do this? Why would they uh, uh, put their own job and, and, and life on the line to, to communicate with one of our detectives, to give an alias in the process? Now, he's, he's been an Orange County deputy for one year, but to give an alias in the process, never knowing that, that Miguel, the decedent's husband, is going to release his phone. That we, uh, if he didn't release the phone, I don't know we would ever know this. So this is, uh, it's incredibly frightening. And, uh, but, but I suspect we'll find a lot more about this as, as the investigation goes on. This was just last night we arrested him. Forgive me if you said this and I missed it trying to follow this all. Um, how much detail did your investigators give this deputy or non-detail? Yeah, so, so as, as soon as our detectives received this call from the Orange County uh, detective, as he called himself, uh, they were immediately on alert and very suspicious of the communication and really gave him nothing, absolutely nothing. But, uh, but as, as soon as that happened and they hung up the phone, trust me, that was a topic of conversation in the room. What was that about? This, this stands out and is incredibly suspicious. 
when they later contacted the Orange County Sheriff's Office, they're like, we don't have a deputy with that last name nor a detective, but we have a phone number that is connected with somebody. Actually, interestingly enough, he gave the same first name, uh, but just gave a different last name. Given the extreme details of both of these situations that we're now potentially talking about, have your detectives or Orange County detectives uncovered any possibility that this is either gang or cartel connected? Well, I, I think that any, any person who looks at these circumstances would automatically go there. Uh, and and uh, our investigation is also exploring any possibilities of that. Uh, but at this point in time, I'm not ready to turn that rock over and disclose whether or not we're going to do that. Trust me, when, when and if uh, that becomes a topic here, you'll see me standing right here and, 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 and telling as much information as you can. But when you look at this thing, I mean, uh, I mean, this is right out of a television show, right? You, I mean, you see this thing, there's a lot of bizarre circumstances here. And now to have this vehicle connected, unique characteristics, the rareness of the vehicle. So, uh, I mean, not in, yet. In the arrest paperwork for the Orange County deputy, the word cousin came up, that he was in some way a cousin of the woman who was carjacked and then later found in Osceola County, you believe that's her. You're saying a family friend, was he throwing around the word cousin uh, to try to gain credibility or was there actually a relationship? Uh, Dave, I don't know if there is an actual relationship. What I'm finding with this particular case, there's a lot of referring to friends as family. Uh, I gave a news conference on Friday and I said, we have not been able to locate any family members in the area. We now have since located, uh, we believe, two, one in Volusia County and one in Osceola County. Neither one of them were expecting a visit from her, and where she was at was nowhere near uh, where they are at. So I don't know if they're biologically related, if, if they're uh, related through marriage, or they're just close friends that call themselves cousins. Uh, uh, we're not at that point yet where we can identify that. We do believe that, that they grew up together possibly in the Dominican Republic uh, before coming over here. So that's largely the decedent's husband and the deputy's wife. Have you yet figured out why, in fact, she was here? Well, we have no idea why she's here. We know that she was here for less than an hour. We have no evidence of her ever being in Seminole County uh, ever before. We believe that uh, she was absolutely targeted and, and, and followed to a certain extent, to a certain point. And, and I think that one of the most important things that, that for us to get out on Friday was this was not a random act of violence that occurred, that she absolutely was targeted. Uh, why she was targeted, I think, is something that uh, our detectives are working aggressively to be able to answer that question. Uh, of course, when you're in this business, you have speculations, you have hunches, you have feelings, uh, but you never let those arrive at the lectern before you can uh, put some evidence behind it. So again, they're, they're going to turn every rock over to find out. The husband, he mentioned something about receiving any threats? Okay. So, so I've described the husband as cooperative. Uh, uh, quite frankly, I think he knows a lot more than what he shared, right? Uh, you don't have your wife communicate with you that you're getting rammed by a car and go two hours without calling anybody. So he has cooperated. He has provided information. I think the initial story was that she was up here to visit family members. I don't know that we believe that. Um, uh, he did give his cell phone, which I'm incredibly grateful because we would not have known about the Orange County deputy, at least not yet, if, if he did not do that. But I think that there's a lot more blanks that he could help uh, fill in about the circumstances involving uh, this particular crime and now uh, potentially other crimes. Is he a person of interest in what happened? He, he is not. He is still um, uh, the husband of our decedent and working with our detectives. He is not a person of interest. You said the 10 millimeter that was found, that's not really common around here. Yeah. Um, what, what does that say, or is that worrisome for you guys that like a weapon or a well, casing was found that's really not common you, you know, the caliber of the weapon uh, is not worrisome, right? The, the fact that there's 100 rounds, regardless of what rounds they are, at a murder scene, I think, is incredibly alarming to any person who ever looks at it. Uh, a 10 millimeter is just, you know, a, a a, a round that is more rare than the 9 millimeters or the 45 calibers that we see out there. Uh, the only significance of that is it makes a better connection between the two crimes. That because of the rareness of the weapon and the round, that it's likely that, that our bad guys are the same bad guys that committed this crime. 
And you got to remember that that this vehicle for two months, February into April, was probably being tossed around. Now I know people are going to say, "Well, just find out who picked up the car and all that." But you know, they send people who are innocent parties, and they say, "Hey, I need you to go down there and pick up this vehicle. I'm going to give you 500 bucks, a thousand dollars, pick it up." So it's not as simple as just look for the guy who who did this. But again, our detectives are working on that. Who purchased it? Who made the deal? Who went to the buy here, pay here store? But uh, these are more sophisticated criminal operations, and this one appears to be pretty significant. Is but it has, sorry, is but, it has been, sorry. Yeah, I'm is gonna go first. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. But I, I think that when you look at uh, between Friday and now, there's a lot of different pieces to the puzzles that are that are coming together. So now you is go. The husband, is the husband facing any charge for the connection with the deputy? No, the, the husband is not a person of interest and not a suspect and, and uh, not likely to be charged in this case at this point. But I may come up here tomorrow with a whole new information based upon somebody who's watching this video, somebody who has some additional information, or uh, connecting some case evidence to other cases that may be out there uh, again. But to recap, we have the car. The car's in evidence. Uh, the car is being processed. Uh, actually, it's, 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 I mean, it's good that we have the car, right? You potentially can get some evidence from it, but we'll see where that goes. Okay. This is such a confusing thing. I just want to make sure that this is kind of for my clarity. You're saying this deputy sheriff in Orange County contacted your detective, it, uh, recorded that conversation illegally, and then passed it on to the husband to kind of give, keep him up to date on what your investigation was doing. Yeah, so, so our detective calls the phone number, the husband of the decedent answers the phone, and then reaches out to a family friend close to law enforcement, the wife of the deputy. And then literally sitting in their home, they call our deputy, they record that communication to our deputy, probably doing it on speakerphone or something like that, so all the communication can be heard. Then they the deputy accesses his unique police system, pulls up as much information about our detective that they just recorded on the phone, takes photographs of that, and sends it to the husband before he ever arrives here for the interview. So he's on his way up here uh, with her brother, and at the time that they're driving here, they're getting fed all this information from the Orange County deputy. Here's where she lives. Here's the detective's name. Here's a, a recording of our conversation. So there, he's feeding all that information back. Why? We're going to find out. But, but uh, any other questions? I don't want to add, go into specifics here, but I, is it safe to assume your office is taking measures to protect your detective yeah. right now? Yeah, that's uh, a great point. So, I mean, our, our detective is, is protected. Um, uh, the, the detective is, is pretty tough uh, by themselves, but we have additional units and sections. Uh, the last place that anybody would want to go is around this detective right now, I can promise you that. Why is all that information there to begin with? Is, it that, is the information on every detective in that system? Well, a, a, every citizen. It's, uh, it's actually your driver's license system. You know, we've had some reports of misuse of what's called the David system, the driver's license information system. And, and this is a prime example of misusing it, not just from an average citizen, but for a, a law enforcement official working this particular case. So. Is the police in Homestead involved in the investigation and any search warrant over there? Uh, uh, we're not doing any search warrants. Again, the husband is not a suspect, but, but the authorities down there in South Florida have been helpful and have been partners with us as, as we move throughout the, the, this case. Again, we're not working any criminal case down there. Uh, but if we do, I promise you, you're going to be the, the second to know <laughs> behind our team. So. Any message for anybody that was potentially connected? I mean, we, they went after the tow truck driver potentially weeks after he towed this car. Are you worried that there might be others out there that need to get in touch with you because they could be in harm's way right now? Yeah, I, I think that w the, the question is, you know, could there be others that are in harm's way? I hope that somebody that's listening and seeing this that feels like that they may be in harm way to contact us and tell us everything that they possibly know and seek a safe haven of protection with coming forward and disclosing as much information as they possibly can. Uh, but again, we're going to backtrack and, and connect some of the cases that are open in probably a lot of different jurisdictions 
and uh, be mindful of kind of the aftermath of how this thing evolves. So that's uh, today's update. I appreciate it, and uh, talk to you guys soon.